RLCraft was already considered to be one of the hardest mod packs for Minecraft, and its 2.9 update made everything so much harder than it used to be. 2.9.2, however, is more of a content and quality of life update than anything else, and personally, I've enjoyed it quite a bit more than any of RLCraft's previous versions. However, one thing that hasn't really changed is that you will die over and over and over and over again. But there are still ways to play safely, even ways not to die a single time throughout your entire world, and that's what I'll be covering in this video. So jumping right in, tip number one is to find a safe village with no dragons nearby. Villages are easily one of the best places in RLCraft since you will automatically have access to waystones, several kinds of crops, villagers to trade with, and aguses to help you kill any hostile mobs nearby. Note however, that villages can still be dangerous if they have unlit caves around or a combination of minecart rails and cobwebs. Lots of dangerous enemies, namely Lycanite mobs like Gru's, can spawn out of dark cave entrances, and Banshees can spawn in a huge radius if minecart rails and cobwebs are anywhere nearby. So using your best judgment, relocate as many times as necessary because right at the start of RLCraft, these two mobs can move through walls, so you'll probably die if either of them spawn. If you do decide to relocate, be wary that the longer you're exploring, the more likely you are to get yourself killed some way or another. Once you find a village, I would recommend making a farm for passive XP. You only need level 2 farming to harvest and plant wheat, and level 4 for carrots, so I'd recommend leveling up that skill as soon as you can. The downside to farming is that for every crop you break, there is a small chance that a Spriggan or Triffid will spawn, and both deal tons of poison damage if you get stuck in any place without cover. So I would recommend building something safe like this if you want to stay safe while farming. Similarly, be sure to mine all ores, grass, and trees at max range to avoid instantly getting hit by any mob that spawns. You'll probably still get jump scared though. If you have any animals nearby, I would recommend boxing them in and making a good farm for breeding. If you have a farm that makes lots of wheat or carrots, or you find a lot of resources while exploring, making a breeding farm in your home will give you tons of extra XP. I recommend cows and bunnies since they both give you some valuable resources like leather and rabbit. Feet. But chickens, pigs, sheep, silix, and makas, and whatever else eats your food and has babies works just fine as well. If you can, I would also recommend rounding up some librarian villagers, because all the books that you find on your travels you can give to them for plenty of emeralds, as they are your main method of getting good enchantments via trading librarian villagers, but also the XP you gain from trading villagers is amazing early game. For those of you that don't know, when you're trading librarian villagers, they'll max out at three different enchantment book trades, and will get new trades every time you trade something that you haven't traded with them before or with around a 10% chance each time you trade something that you have already traded them before. Normally, at the start of a world, you gather flint, slap it on some rocks, punch leaves for sticks, make a knife, mow the lawn for fibers, make fake string, craft a baby axe, chop trees, slice up logs for planks and planks into sticks until you finally have a crafting table and wooden tools. You can actually skip this phase completely if you find a crafting table or a chest with planks in it, as you can mine crafting tables with your fists and pick up a little pebbles on the ground to make cobblestone. Once you have enough resources, craft a saddle with leather, string, and iron for a much needed horse mount you will probably be using for a while. Lucky for us, Shivaxi included a nice little mod called Callable Horses, so we have our horse whenever we need it, wherever we need it. All you need to do is go into keybinds and assign one button to set horse and another button to call horse. Make sure the horse you tame is decently fast though. Always carry a bed around, or a bedroll if you don't want to set your spawn. Knights in RLCraft are a death sentence if you aren't well prepared. If you find a full chainmail set via village or desert structure, level your defense to 4 so you have some extra added protection. Craft a stone tower shield so you don't get one shot headshot by skeletons a stone throwing knife for range, and a one-handed weapon of choice among those Spartan weaponry has to offer. Or just use a stone axe like me. Use nymphs whenever you can to heal, or just craft healing. Bandages only take two string and one wool, so basically just wool. Never drink unpurified water unless you have a nymph for healing, just in case you get parasites. They will randomly decide to just all out bite your head to death. Instead, cook some bottled water in a furnace and drink that. I have tried using charcoal filters on canteens, but it's just too much work in my opinion. 
Make sure to always stay away from caves, lava pools, forest fires, sirens, nether portals, spawning pools, and especially far from dragons. You will be able to kill dragons later, but I would recommend since it's just the start of the game to stay away since you'll get one shot. Immediately find shelter in case of a mob event. And if the shelter isn't good enough, get on your horse and flee for your life until the event is over. Specifically flee for your life if the event is Black Plague or Satan Claws, as reapers can move through walls and your shelter is pretty meaningless. If you get a fire mob event, find a shelter that's not made of anything flammable. And if you get eruption, make sure your shelter isn't even made of cobblestone, because Vulcans can melt straight through cobblestone. Don't directly attack infernal mobs with vengeance, and never attack a blighted mob unless you're willing to take the risk of possibly being one shot. The trade-off for blighted mobs, however, is that if you do get at least one hit in and they die, you will get tons of levels and heart crystal shards. And once you get at least one hit in, you can kill them with flint and steel, or water, or whatever really does the trick. If you do see an infernal mob, you most likely will still want to stay away from it, but if you don't, here's what some of the potion effects do. If it has choke, don't attack it unless you want to start drowning. If it has ender or ninja, it teleports and retaliates when hit, so it might teleport right behind you. Fiery will catch you on fire when you hit it, poison will poison you, and wither will wither you. If it has ghastly, don't give it a line of sight, otherwise it'll shoot a gas fireball which generally will get you killed one way or another since it blows up structures. Gravity will randomly push or pull you if it sees you. Weber will attempt to place a cobweb on the block you're currently on, so if you're standing on like a carpet or snow, it can't really cobweb you. And if a mob has storm and it sees you, make sure there are blocks directly above your head, otherwise you could get struck by lightning. And most importantly, Vengeance, as I previously explained, and Sticky, which will make you throw whatever weapon you use to hit the mob. Absolutely terrible late game, which is why people generally enchant their weapon with Curse of Possession late game despite the negative effects. If a mob can ever pathfind to you, a blighted mob could spawn and instantly kill you at any point. So do your best to make sure mobs can never get to you, especially blighted cave spiders. Wear earplugs when exploring the ocean to avoid the siren's song. Never swim in the ocean for risk of being absolutely destroyed by ocean mobs. I would recommend instead just using a boat. Never run or fall from a high place next to a crake, cause they don't have eyes so they can only like feel you running or something. Jousts in deserts are not hostile unless there's a joust alpha leading the pack, so stay away from the alphas. Look away if you ever see a cockatrice. You'll know if you see one if you start getting hit by a constant laser and your screen gets super shaky and distorted. Also probably run because they chase you. Craft an atlas. It's basically a vanilla map, but way better. Make sure to check the bounty board in your village and complete any easy bounty for extra silver and emeralds down the line. In case of a fall, either have feather falling boots equipped, a water bucket, or a grappling hook in your hotbar. Note though, grappling hooks can kill you, so I wouldn't recommend using them unless you know how to use them. Some nuts guy actually has a really good video on YouTube on how to use them, so I would recommend watching that if you want to be a grappling pro. Change your limb UI to hearts instead of the player model for a more accurate representation of how much health your limbs have. Always be mindful of your temperature in the changing seasons. Each season is 21 days long, so be prepared for a very hot summer and a very cold winter. You can craft heating and cooling coils for midsummer and midwinter, and both are powered just by redstone, so not too hard. Or you can fill a 2x2 space with a lava bucket for heat, or stand in a pool of water for cooling. Different biomes and confined spaces also affect your temperature, so be sure to keep an eye out on your temperature gauge whenever you start getting too hot or too cold. Eventually you can just put Aussie liner on your gear, but that isn't easily accessible early game. If you really want a flying mount, tame a griffin with your rabbit feet, it usually takes around 4-6, to six. or find a jungle and ride an amphithere for 20 seconds. Granted, as of 2.9.2, amphithers now deal 2 hearts of damage every time they attack you while taming, so I don't really recommend it unless you're well prepared. Amphithers also can't stop moving midair and are a bit harder to control, so take that as you will. Craft baubles like the tool belt, backpack, and potion rings as soon as you can for extra bonuses to your stats and make hitting level 12 building one of your top priorities so you can collect anvils, craft your forging stations, and reforge your gear for better bonuses. Namely just the undying modifier. Kill blue spiders and battle towers for bazaars, which give immunity to poison. When attempting your first battle tower, don't try and take it from the inside. 
I find it easiest to take it from the outside and use stairs to safely mine the spawners for lots of XP. Killing mobs ends up getting you quite a bit more XP, but more often than not I find that infernal mobs or blighted mobs will somehow end up killing you. I recommend having a pre-placed water bucket underneath you just in case you fall and building 7 blocks up at a time to mine each floor's spawner. Remember not to even touch the chest on the top two floors, or the battle tower will just start blowing up everything in sight to get to you. Instead use a hopper to get the loot out of chests without ever having to touch it. If the chest is locked however, the only way to safely open it will be removing the golem from the top of the tower somehow, which usually isn't going to be feasible for your first tower. Later you can craft a switchbow and ender arrows to swap places with the golem, but even then you have to get out of its aggro range for it to stop shooting fireballs and safely loot the chest which usually involves just jumping off the tower and climbing back up. If you manage to get 4 Scarlet, head over to the Tainted Biome and kill a Shambler to make a Scarlet Reaver. Shamblers are basically Enderman looking enemies that spawn up night and move super slow, so it's easy to kill as long as it doesn't hit you. But it is immune to projectiles. When doing this though, I would recommend staying away from any large biomes and knowing that it is nighttime, so sleep as soon as you can. The Scarlet Reaver is an amazing early game weapon since it provides passive lifesteal on every hit, so it is worth the risk. Always have a recall potion in your hotbar if you have one. They will almost instantly teleport you to your spawn point if you ever are in a sticky situation. Usually at this point in the game, I have two potion rings of speed and a tool belt with the undying modifier so that I have much better survivability than I did at the start. At this point, you'll pretty much just want to be trying to get diamond armor with at least protection 3 or 4 enchantments, so that you can start somewhat safely doing harder structures, kill harder enemies, and get much more loot. I still wouldn't really recommend going underground at this point, as to put the difficulty in perspective, killing a dragon is going to be much easier than doing that. If you've got a high enough speed stat, and you have two potion rings of speed, just craft an iron crossbow with a few bolts and good enchantments, and killing a dragon should be pretty easy, provided you don't let it get too close to you. 2.9.2 does include investigative AI, so when shot from far away enemies will try and move toward where they think you might be, but if you're not there you should be fine. That's about it for my early game tips I found to be most useful in my playthroughs. These tips should be pretty much all you need to get yourself level 16 attack and defense and level 12 magic for protection 3 to 4 diamond armor and good weapons to protect you early and mid game stages of RLcraft. Once you get to this point, you're pretty much free to go exploring for villages and trade with villagers to your heart's content, the only threat still being dragons and the rare Lycanite mob fusions that spawn absurdly overpowered mobs that you basically just have to recall potion from. This Gru, for example, was level 62 and had an insane amount of health. Look up guides or watch casualties videos on 2.9.2 if you want to see what maxed out weapons and armor enchantments look like, as you'll want to be looking for pretty much all of those when you're trading villagers. Personally, I'm the most happy finding Unbreaking 3, Advanced Protection 3 to 4, and Strength and Vitality at the start of my playthroughs, but there's so many enchantments for you to go for, you'll eventually find them all. If you haven't already, I would also highly recommend checking out casualties video on how to be OP in version 2.9. I hope you all find this guide helpful, and I'll try to get some more helpful videos uploaded soon, but for now, just note that if you've ever mustered up the courage to download and play this mod pack, you truly are a beautiful hardcore gamer in my eyes. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see all you guys later.